morning, everybody. Welcome to Temple University. Thanks for coming out in this cold, wintry morning. Um, my name is Markus Bingenheim. I teach at the religion department here at Temple. Um, today is a very auspicious and wonderful day for us because we have Kempo giving a lecture on Buddhist um, meditation here today. Um, Dean Sufas and Dr. Kathy Yuno um, from the Asian Studies program uh, are sent their regards. They are sorry they can't come this morning. They had other appointments, prior appointments. Um, and uh, once everybody has found a seat, uh, we, we will start. Um, Dr. Douglas Dugworth, my esteemed colleague, is going to introduce Kempo. When, the, uh, when he's um, finished, we will uh, stand up and the, the Kempo comes in. Uh, thank you, Marcus. Um, we're very fortunate to have a Buddhist teacher of, of this stature, of uh, Kimbo Sotarke here at Temple University. And uh, I would like to thank you, all of you for coming, all of the organizers, um, and in particular, uh, Kimbo Sotarke. He became a monk when he was 23 years old at what came to be the largest monastic college in the world. So um, Ladongar, the place where uh, Kimbo Sotarki is from, is on the Tibetan plateau in a nomadic area. And it seems to be very far removed off in, in an, almost another world compared to Philadelphia. But in the Buddhist world, it's in some ways the center of the Buddhist world. There are, there are over 10,000 monks and nuns uh, living at this center. They're producing a lot of scholars. Uh, a lot of uh, texts are being translated into different languages. And um, Tibetan Buddhism, in particular, has the largest canon of any language of texts that are translated from India. There's over 108 volumes of uh, the, the canon of the words of the Buddha and over 250 volumes of Indian commentaries that were translated in, into Tibet. So we're very lucky to have uh, Kimbo Sotarke come from this, this dynamic center of the Buddhist world at Larungar. And he has been traveling around the world, translating texts into Chinese from, uh, from Tibetan. And he's published a number of, of, of these texts. And this is his third time to the United States. Uh, the first time he was translating for his teacher and the founder of this, Lagrangar, this, this largest monastic community in the world. And he was here last year in the United States. He gave uh, talks at a few universities. This year, he's come from, uh, recently this past week, Yale and Princeton. And uh, tomorrow, he's, he's going to the University of Virginia, my alma mater. So uh, additionally, we have um, a translator, um, a, a team of translators, Sangay Khandro, um, and Lama Chanam. So we're very lucky that both of them are scholars in their own right. In order to translate uh, a Buddhist talk, one has to have a certain degree of understanding uh, as well to communicate it effectively. So both of them have, have published and translated a number of important works from Tibetan into English. And Sangay Khandro was the uh, translator for um, Kimpo Jigme Punso, who is the teacher of uh, uh, Kimpo Sotarke, who founded this Lavramgar, this, this largest monastic uh, college in the world. So I'm very happy that uh, Kimbo Sotarke has uh, come to Temple University. And uh, we're very fortunate to have this opportunity to hear um, a scholar um, represent his tradition, the, the rich, richness and depth of the Tibetan Buddhist uh, tradition that's very much alive today on the Tibetan plateau. So I'm very happy to introduce you now to um, Kimbo Sotarke. So the, the format of the talk will be um, one hour of, of lecture and uh, one hour of questions and answers. So um, hold on to your questions until the end of the talk. Uh, 
Rangabsamsur,天天感谢你们,天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天天
And um, for example, when I was in Princeton University, uh, we had a meeting with some of the educators just yesterday, and they showed quite a bit of interest and were asking me questions about how it is that we disseminate uh, the Buddhist teachings in our institution uh, in Tibet in terms of scriptural transmissions and knowledge and also oral instructions that are passed uh, just from teacher to student and so forth. And they were genuinely interested to know how we educate our students and how their success has been. And so I thought this was really important and I was impressed that this was the level and degree of interest and not asking questions about how we can gain more prosperity or uh, how our institution bec can become more well-known or even for any other worldly consideration, but that the main emphasis was how do we really educate and how does this penetrate um, into the minds of those students who are learning this information and developing their knowledge. And so, with that in mind, it's from that perspective that I will give my talk here today to teach more of the traditional Buddhist approach because it really does and will have a far-reaching benefit for all of you. Chut ham chut. Tung ni diem bab gum. The chiri gum gum jet zena zuo tomer tni ta xiapa tong gum jet. Tenek siapa mahu tahu jenis jenis yang na rancur ke nawasan jepi cu tamce stungari jenis jenis ke tni cik samala jicak dana samala tukba zaya onjo mampus yud nere tangsan garik jenis na ta nangtung ke stawa ke stungi re jejaldi kui na ta stang su yosa ke diksa ina jaga zama ina jaga komba ina jaga तो तो कहाँ समझा दे मेरा मित सोमर तावन रज को भी उन्हें ताते ता थाकने को वांधे शे ना तार तांग चेकी नंगूर को तो तो तारे मित सोमा जगे यो मारे ये ना यं दी रामजन द ट्रब यो बा मारे समझा द शिरप की लो ड्रम दे रंबा विजन द तक्षे शी चिरों दी तांग तो शिरोर को खोरी थामचे पियो रामजन ट्रब आच्छी यो मार गुस क्याबर चंग रंग सिम दे लगता है चरों दी ता सिम दे ये में नाम का स्ताव कौन जो चीज़ उधर तो ने तारीख सांची चुल के दो उस कामना यंग सोंग रे नक कामना यंग ते तारीख जमोस तो सोंग रे However, um, this approach towards dharma, or phenomena, um, does instill some trepidation in the minds of many who uh, may assume that the Buddhist view of emptiness means that now everything that we are accustomed to in terms of um, that which we utilize, our food, our clothing, um, and so forth, is all going to have to just disappear and become void or empty and there would be this vacuity where there's nothing. Now that's not what one is supposed to assume or understand uh, because from the point of view of uh, relative truth or that which is um, designated as um, phenomena as we see it now, it's not going to go away but that rather one applies the view to determine the nature of what is appearing as phenomena and to determine that the nature, that the intrinsic nature of that phenomena actually does not exist in the way that it seems to. And so by using one's incisive knowledge, one's prajna, one can check and analyze through the various techniques that are set forth to reach a determination that this phenomena does not actually exist in the way that we have known it to be. And then that leads to discussions of uh, that which transcends the ordinary mind, that which becomes like the metaphor of space. And of course, Buddha spoke on this subject um, 
in the sutras and in great detail in the tantras. Uh, Yopa and it's important to initially identify what is this mind. Uh, this is important actually whether you believe in Buddha Dharma or not. Uh, because in fact, all of the suffering that countless beings are enduring um, on our planet in this world and elsewhere is all due to the lack of controlling one's mind, the lack of really identifying or mastering one's own mind. And so in this tradition, in order to get control of that, then there are two ways to approach, analytically or through contemplative um, placement in meditation. From the point of view of analytical um, understanding of mind's nature, then it is as the great Nagarjuna mentions in his Madhyamaka Karika, which is the root prajna of the middle way. Uh, since it exists, it is unborn, and since it is non-existent, it is never born. And so this is reference to, of course, the mind, that it exists, um, and by virtue of its nature, it is unborn, and it is non-existent, so it was never born. Now, given that this may seem contradictory, it allows a practitioner to begin to use reasoning or in order to establish an understanding of what this mind actually is. And so there are many ways to debate, which it involves using different modes of logic and reasoning in order to analyze and identify and reach a conclusion. For example, we may um, use techniques such as if desire arises in your mind, the passion of desire is surfacing, then you immediately seek to identify if that really exists or not. What is the nature? What's the intrinsic nature of that passion? Desire or anger or whatever it may be. Same Chick <laughs> Namki Kaman Poson, Lina Jisonda, Gana in Natari, Tarikirion in 
ta tariga semgi kao shikbazikiz ga yonje semgi tariga ta jongni joxsim taqba tezikiz ga yonje tri tiga kirondi ta semzegendi keda tomi qishapar degan erkimna ta nguni tuyo bazmari samgi gonje ndor dekh chopa ndor de tariga ndor dekh chopa gakna cheredzena tugun debi se matrup tarti se matrup mauni se matrup ozeidana semzegida deba de sarvishir na matrup tartava tartava zengdi ki de ngunzin sayon marish kaji hajum chamura tartava zikirondi tar karchakchi karchakchi de mo shakirona tarta zengdi ki ngunzin sazi yomare deni mau zengdi ki de tarun marki va yimbi shirna na ta tindi ngose ki matq marshi patsana chi sem zengdi ki zga yodna zda chame zegonje ta ngoma taq zishade kirondi na rung sem ga rung semla sarafta ga kerondi ta sem zengdi ki de kana zenre zergona hajang tariga jut mata bastavaz ge yore the question is then does this mind exist and we do have so many uh, thought formations an abundance of proliferations of thoughts that are constantly emerging uh, so how is it that we can determine that the mind does not exist when this process is going on so according to the different methods that we use uh, which are based on analysis then in mantra there is the process known as june drosum which means uh, to determine the or to collapse the false cave of the mind by um, discovering that it it originates from nowhere it comes from nowhere it stays nowhere and it goes nowhere uh, but this has to be determined, so it means that one has to um, understand and try to see, well, just where does this mind come from? And where does it stay? Where does it endure? And where does it go? Where does it depart to? Now, there are many profound ways to explain this threefold process of analysis um, according to Secret Mantra's Upadesha system. But in order to receive those teachings, you would have to receive empowerment and you would have to have completed the 500,000 preliminary requirements. And so since that's not necessarily the case with all of you, I'm not free to explain on that level. But what I can explain is that this process involves, um, in terms of where does the mind come from, where does the mind stay, um, think within your own mind just start to think about it where do you think the mind has come from did it come within your body within your brain uh, does it stay in your head does it stay in your heart uh, where is it located in your body where can you find it and when it goes when it's gone does it vanish up into space does it dissolve back into your body what do you think happens? Like right when you're having concepts, like right now when you're thinking. So where have they come from? Where do they endure? Where do they go to when one concept ends and before the next one arises? So in order to collapse this false cave of the mind, you go through this threefold process. And in fact, um, originally or primordially, the mind has never existed. And this is mentioned in many of the scriptures, particularly the Vajra Cutter, uh, goes into detail about this threefold process of the mind um, coming, staying, and going. And this refers to past, present, and future. Uh, the mind of the past cannot be held on to because it's already gone. It, it has come from somewhere, but yet it has vanished from that empty source. The mind of the present, uh, which would be right now, cannot be identified because instantaneously, moment by moment, it is so subtle and it is so swift that there's nothing that we can identify as, okay, there it is, because as soon as you try to identify, it becomes something else. And then the mind of the future hasn't been established yet. So how can we say where this has gone? And so in truth, it involves looking within, introspecting into your own mind to try to see, well, just what is this? And it actually becomes uh, extremely ineffable. Gare, so I'm not any that same day. Don't want it. 
semde madr bazı da kosong di tatte tağ nawa san sanji pişadın uğur tonyu kosong in sakıp sana anerkes timya tarif tonyu zeçok yonca. İna ya tar tık bi wandış yine ina ranga onupo madr bazamızga tonyu tar tık bayan mı var tonyu niense vazende. İna ya nasu mu tamçıda serp tuma me bani onunzen denzen hacan tıbo yonca. Tey yedi ki onu di, tohumar tey tabi, daha tonyun menzen de ya, hacan karşıya yendi. Tey yem bir gençsin ki, deni hongo lohan lardanji, ta hongo goma, deni hongo insanı, goma hongo gerçekten ne çize yendi cına, yandak gönüzü nam gir ki, mepre yandak kançın gir, tandan rol şevanam, kila rona mayın olsun. Di tondur çire zeni na, kuyunan kan tombuz gerçekten rol gönü na, daha kimede rokanyan mara. Deni alıkır ki yine aranjaga, tamamı şengir ki yine, açıkır ki yine. Deni Amerika gide, kahvaçaga ski darıg, lala da ski niyanga darıg. Alıkır ki gına sonu di çoğuzey maran, son son adar timur tavyaka. Da ski niyanga yine adar, ski xarva yine adar. Kan tarıyan, deni tarıg. Ski medene tekin kahvaçaga tanga rosayon mare. Ama ona niyona yonu, cima. Dün cikkoz anlık vaga, tabi ulak tonju vaga, tiğin kanga gerçekten ağır kapçık olsun diyor muyum? Alık ki gün ağır olur vaga. Ta tesun cevaga, deni ski meden kanga gerçekten çok hamin gelsin. Tedan cevaga, tonyet, çubim ta tamçıda cevaga gerçekten tonyet de tambo tarı, çu tamçı yomarı zeydana, ta mesin gerçekten mepaga, ski tabi telat deni dana zor tarı ga, deni yan tabi, tonya çembogun kanga. Tıştan atar in rogun re. Katı tıştır mesih ki çanzı ki nate kebin rol kızım marayız eydi ana. Dene ta lohun lakdan çizdi ki da bir manra vakır diyakır ki taka keba çimbo re. Kungu tok son onre. The mind's nature, excuse me, the mind cannot be established because it is inherently empty. And according to this presentation, we cannot say that someone who understands this because they've gone through the analytical process so that they now determine, well, yes, that is true. But we cannot say that they are understanding absolute emptiness. In other words, that they have realized the genuine nature of emptiness. No, that's not what's being said. But what it is, is it is proximate uh, understanding of emptiness. So it is approaching that, and it is important. In fact, it is essential. Um, why? Because everyone, essentially everyone, from countless past lifetimes until now, has been focusing upon the true inherent identity of their mind or their self. And this is the source of their predicament in samsara. And so that's why it is important to begin with this process to achieve an understanding of that which is approaching a realization of genuine emptiness. On this subject, one of the greatest masters uh, of India, Acharya Bhava Viveka, who lived in the sixth century, uh, in his treatise called the Umanimbo, or Essence of Madhyamaka, he says, quote, Lacking the staircase of perfectly correct relative understanding, to try to proceed to the higher perfectly correct mansion is unacceptable for the learned. Now what this means is that without a staircase, one cannot get to the top of the building, right? Be it a staircase, an elevator, an old escalator that's just barely going up, whatever the case may be, um, you can't reach the top. And so that, in his quote, is likened to the need to um, accomplish this proximate um, understanding of emptiness, which is called here perfectly correct relative understanding. That's the staircase. And that staircase is going to lead to the actual fully qualified realization of emptiness, which is likened to the perfectly correct mansion, in other words, to reach the top. And without that, 
Those who are learned, those who know and who have realized emptiness, are not going to accept that you can just go to the top without some way to get there. And so, for example, um, previously when I was in the United States, the first time I had an opportunity to uh, go in the elevator in the Twin Towers up to the top. So it sticks in my mind because that was such an amazing ascent to the great mansion of that um, platform where we could see everything. And now, of course, that's completely gone. So that's also showing impermanence. The staircase is not the actual qualified uh, final destination of, of genuine emptiness realization, but it is necessary to ascend through that process. Tamchitamchara, <laughs> Tati Nanga Nandun Tetsu Yamsum Yungu Yonin, Nekome, Kanotariana, Muni Chi, Mauana Test, Tavi Jonte, Rangi, Tusum Shiki, Reva, Tusum Shiki, Tenitari, Tusum Shini Tunte, Yamle Shiki Janzina, Hajan, Rantana Chimbore, Tate on Rankurko, Chi Lama Dan of Girgan Timu Martine Dan. Rankurka chig, huesta zamsk, the Rankurka, huelo zamskina, Yanjig, uh, Nachu, Tundo soina, ta, takurka kurgonina, Hajan Kaori, Mosekin Jitingo, Bernard Lankur Kalo as in Nayan, Clamkum menina, that is, uh, Rankurka, uh, the Yiki Sashi Timore of Tidana, uh, Girgungo to the, uh, ta, Jean Tarshin Gonakanga, that the Tun Javago, uh, the Ni Chugan Dondayan, uh, Gergun la tingo badan. Chaber de yana, tapjurk, stonik, tunda, chu lami manga latine, ranga gojes yenina, tam matsinina, nipa tam chicker, nipim chokero, tari yengonri. Hence, analyzing to determine intellectually initially that emptiness uh, is, is how we identify the mind, that it is non existent, yet it exists in the nature of emptiness. It is both, it is neither. Both meaning, <clears throat> it is both non-existent and existent. Um, and neither means it's um, neither of the two. It is just empty. And so, uh, as it mentions in the ornament of the middle way, ultimately the view is devoid of all elaborations. And so there's nothing to hold on to uh, there is nothing to be free from. It is just simply the fundamental nature of the mind that must be identified. And I'm aware that some of these great treaties, such as the Umagyan Ornament of the Middle Way, uh, have been translated into English and so forth. And so this is very important to study these treaties and to not only study, but to contemplate and to, to then you know, internalize and realize the meaning. But uh, it's important to understand that you can't just read these treaties without relying upon a master to explain the inner meaning to you. Uh, when it comes to these kinds of profound subjects, it's very important to understand you can't just read a scripture um, and expect to understand the complexity and the subtlety of the inner meaning that is there. This would be very difficult and very rare for someone who could actually do that. Just like when we're learning anything in the world, we have to rely upon teachers and mentors. Well, all the more so when it comes to trying to understand perhaps the most difficult subject of all, which is understanding the fundamental nature of emptiness, uh, to be the nature of the mind and the nature of all phenomena. 
Certainly, one must rely upon a qualified teacher in order to understand this and to carefully listen to the uh, oral instructions of the lineage. And if you have an opportunity to do this, then of all the things that you could find in this world, that would be to uh, connect with or to find the single most important thing to know. Uh, Unbuyopayan <laughs> Tar <laughs> Э, <laughs> Tan dutsu yang namji ganer kena cuma jek sone zonte, tni je namji bi tarik stoba tarik bandu rengkur ganer nak chef topkur gogenen lah, tan ngundi ceri orang je suyo tak songan je. Checking into our mind then to see if there is something tangible that exists that we can establish as true, to see if there's something um, tangible or material that does not exist. Uh, and, or that has discontinued that we could establish to be this nature. Uh, we will eventually determine through analysis that the mind is like space. For it is as one of the greatest masters of all time, the author of the Bodhicharya Avatara, which is the way of life of the Bodhisattvas, the great Indian pundit Shantideva um, tells us, and I'll quote from him, but I assume that many of you have heard of him and may have even read or are studying this great text, The Way of Life of the Bodhisattvas. If not, it's something you really must study and come to know. And um, in there, actually, he, he teaches the subject of uh, emptiness in his ninth chapter. And at the time that he was teaching this in India, uh, when he got to the subject of the ninth chapter, he rose up from his throne and he began getting higher and higher up into space and like um, levitating and going up into space and eventually uh, disappearing from sight but still being able to be heard as he gave the teachings so as to emphasize the point that he was making about the nature of emptiness. So the quote reads, when realizing that all that is tangible and intangible uh, does not exist in the domain of the mind. It is then that no other aspects exist. So everything becomes non-conceptual and completely tranquil. And so this um, reminds us of the analogy that is found in the ornament of the Madhyamaka, the Umagen, where emptiness is likened to the ocean and the mind is like a little boat uh, floating on the ocean that uh, falls apart. And so there's nothing there to hold on to when uh, just falling into the ocean, uh, which is emptiness. Once emptiness is realized, then this, this, um, this boat or ship of the mind falls apart with nothing to hold on to. And so it becomes 
non-conceptual and just completely tranquil. Everything just rests there. Tate shapi go go tare semun zan tang chik. Tani semun zan tang chik da te tare shapa mambo mergyare. Tare takar rang sem la ta. Te kumchi mabhan jam so tani kso anje parta jinga chu gyale. Sarta rang sem sem chik chok. Parar ta jiwa chu mambo zaga tani jim jik shi da zong yik zhe. Dimo shi gandak nabe rang sem la. Nang the cats are at the Chikujona, that go to your song. That is uh, what I'm going to say for the uh, approach that involves analysis. As for the other approach, um, approach I mentioned, which is uh, the contemplative meditative placement, then to understand emptiness from that perspective, uh, you just look directly into the mind without analyzing, as the great Nippon Rinpoche tells us that um, it's not necessary to look at to look and try to analyze all the myriad phenomena that are external just turn within just introspect and only focus directly into the subject itself jagar ge tripchen khwar sara ha chimbo halis ke tarim ke ba chimbo ra khunga chok song re jena some down, some share raptor panes, some of the chung on the Nesha jump there. Says in the dinner, that some, some, some share young jammy, some clean young jammy, some di chin, maybe a huena, which one came out of Batavi, Runga Simgo, Mola, Runga Simgo teacher only, that go to the old song. Another quote from the great um, Indian master Saraha from his spiritual hymns, and he tells us. Completely eliminate the thinker and the thoughts. That means mind and object of mind. Rest in the mindless state, like a newborn child. So, just as the quote tells us, by eliminating the process of thinking and even considering who is the thinker or the apprehender, just rest in this mindless state, like a newborn child, a child that has just come out of the womb. <laughs> Non the Marar Mugedan of a new Kugni in Nandraga. Shurura Hara of a young Edan of the Ne, Renatum Daman Drakin in Nandraga. Gandam Kantina young, Renatu de Mool after Ned Kabna, Renatu de Ransa Turnjo Sonje. Gumchen Mavan Jams of Gono Dunga, Ned Kabna, Tamjo Sambi Nishir and Bochi Drummit Kamna, Chosonjo Zena, Tetsi Taki Namkala, Teba Gender Rungasa, Givjin Bayan, Tora, Ne. That the chase into Jena, Monsegi Tucker Girl, Namkala Arte Jeratoni, Namkartonaria, that they don't judge and the Runga Sema, Semgi Semla Tay Nerkumna, Semte Natum German Jar Natum, Yujin B Nerkumna, Stoma, Yeni Tubmamnua, Huena, Numoa, Zerdan Kiguna, Zerdan Mode Tejati, Zerdan de, then a Namkadam, Namkan Java Tabber, Yeni Tubmamnua, Yenoda, Chirna Betene, Studa Kore. Cherizena, Kirnabisim, Runga, Mar, Nyamrejoid, and Runga Nato de Cheese, Tudana, then a gold Tamar Gumju, a Runga Sem, Runga Sem as Tudan, Gojure, Gold the Kirnabe Cheese, Runga Sem, Runga Sem, Nato, Zon Yanandra, Namban Yanandra, Churga Sema, Churga Tenina, Jamazga Targon, no Cheki, Rimur Mons, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Runga Sema, Mm. Now, whether you are falling asleep, dreaming, even if you can, distracted, when you are um, overwhelmed by conflicting emotions, whatever the case may be, you should look at your mind at that time, that that's the main objective that's being presented here. Um, this subject uh, was dealt with by the great Nihon Rinpoche in his Lamp of Certainty, which he composed at age seven, where it states, just like gazing directly into space, one's mind is inherently empty as it is present. So in its presence, it is inherently empty. And this is telling us that whatever is going on with the mind, it's your mind that you are dealing with. And if you understand 
that primordially the nature of this mind is empty, which means that it has never actually existed, that it is non-existent, then when you are feeling a passion such as anger or any other passion, you can determine that the nature of this passion is unborn because it doesn't really exist in a non-existent mind. And so you can just rest in that moment. You can do this within your own mind. Um, it's difficult to know what's going on in the minds of others, but you definitely are the one who knows what's going on in your own mind. So whatever is going on there, rather than holding on to that and pursuing that objectively, you just gaze right into the ascertainer, the mind itself, and you identify that as being non-existent and empty, and you rest, and you will see that all of those reactions are naturally pacified. Mă ieșir în băce drumul în circa ieri ori vei. Ioreva. Ioreva. Ia. Ce rănțuri stăm eu ori vei. And so this text that I just quoted from this lamp of certainty, Rikice asked if it has been translated into English, and we replied, yes, it has. Rikice wants to know if any of you have read it. Have you had a chance to study it? Maybe you think he was too young to write anything comprehensible at age seven, so it might not be worth it, but really that's not the case. You should check it out. Then <laughs> Uh, so this is not really a discussion of the, uh, let's say, the elimination of passions and the, um, the establishment of wisdom awareness. This is rather uh, the emphasis of actualizing the correct, perfectly correct view. And in doing so, by sustaining the perfectly correct view, then a perfectly pure wisdom will emerge as a matter of course in an ineffable way. And so this has become something that is so inexpressible that great treaties have been dedicated to the subject, um, which is referred to in texts such as the Uttara Tantra and the, um, the uh, Ornament of Certainty and so forth, uh, where it mentions, uh, and Kim Chi gave the quote, which means that um, on the subject we're on, one must know how to identify the nature of one's own mind in terms of um, developing a perfectly correct view. And so the perfectly correct view is the, is the viewer of itself. And in that context, to view in a qualified way uh, the nature of who you are is the most precious Discovery. <laughs> 
Tonzit, a Jenny, Tonzit, Dimonzik, the Rumboche, Nazo, or Chayo, the Coyer and Binge. Then if she's not a regular longer, then a singer tariga, Timojan and Chana Chong Maritana. In a coa, Zumba, Zumba, Zumba, Unzun, you are in Docha on Marie. They indeed are a Congo, Rigendungan and Honset, the Zong, Sormi Marchandi, then a Jima tariga, Kunmazga, Tatim Tons on it. That is Kumadi, Honset, or Kurgo, Samidan, Regisim Jangas on the Tene, Tansun, Gumbo Logic, Congo Sua Sutati, Tene, that is Honset, the Harabiguja, Kumadel of Jinjong. Kumadel of Jinjong, Taku Yam Sandar, and do Tavi, Juran Tanjans, then Takua, Jim Tongan, and the Chayana, Samidan, Tene, Yid Machi, than Kongur Kumdana, Yara Cheritana, than Dimu. Rumboche Nazo Chadan Chibaga, Tene, Hongs, Circle Hongs, the Chung are Jim Chica made of Jenton Chiant. Tatu Jenki de Coin, Dele, Hobagan, and Rantan Tui Chigatari, Rjun Norchin, you name Togatari Chon of Jenjang, and they congregate on the Marit. Ota, Kuma, Tuzi Chiron, the Tayan Coyer, and Dobalan Chironota Yatana, Chua Tui Rantan Chesgot in a Tutu Quasi Jingo, Revayo. Quantic Ustir Zi Kirondi, Dam Gumbo Logic Parcher de la Terri, Semu, Semgumo Wounds and Circa Manga Sonsak. Dam Manga Sondi, Manga de Tomato de Nercumate, Sem Hachan Gai, or Tap, Mandravatari Yorin in a Tindi, Jima Darin de la Chatin Chesgozi, that Chatin Chami, Kushin Joker, Kunami and Narkudi de Skushi and Erkamar and Semu de Rangarumo de Sir Stu, the Mato Jan Chatin Mazen. The Nerkuma. Dari şok sosu sosu şok şey bir ne erkebna, lami mangır tadına şok şey bir ne erkebna, rengi semgar ettiği kirondi, taçı şok şok şey kirayı olsa mekka. Deni ne mak çorğa zamzı sonu kirondi, tuğa ta hlucup kumdana şirayı onu dana, taç uka mangır sosu ki tuğa hal etti ki kengok şey son, ku ne mak çorğa gran, şok işi çıka mara, ne mak rejimde şok işi ti semgar etti di tuğa, tar ki çorğa masum dopa mekani ne ti çeyr gözdi, a tadına ayık çok mangır ayık çok zemin. Tam mangır ayın çok değil mek atarı. Kuyu ni mak çoğuma gören atarı. Deva top ki de tarına yana mıtsır çıkan diye mongu deva top mamyon. Tar cisi inler ana deir. Gerçek çıkır dinor longşo da kuyu onu tabi tarkur kuyunur gör. Renge semuza nu niren hangi çeyak kanına. Tayinler atarı. Koşun çok da gündür iki mek at zeynler. Cima atarı. Gumbukla çok lobmiyim çalda kira zeki yonca. Tan dıtsu yinci atarı gündür. Alanca lorgi zirretten lorgi indi çundu nakti ikir ona her nabay ona hacan kıba mongu zire rengi sema tartuk şeyge ondu hacan karçeye uğraya usamgı yok. On this subject of identifying lion's nature and the importance of it, I have a story to share with you, a true story, um, which is uh, about one of the, um, one of the amazing uh, occurrences in the life of the great Indian master Nagarjuna, who was a fully ordained monk. And of course, they would go out and beg for alms for the midday meal. And at one point, uh, at one point, one woman approached him and offered Nagarjuna a golden receptacle cup, which is studded with beautiful jewels, precious, authentic jewels all around it to use for his begging bowl. Actually, in truth, monks are not supposed to receive or use these kinds of valuable objects, but because Nagarjuna has no fixation or desire, he readily took it as though it was just something ordinary. Um, and so he begged for alms that day using that receptacle. And there was one thief in the vicinity who saw this cup in his hand. And the thief thought, oh, this is really amazing. And he began to follow him, stalking him. And after Narajuna had completed his lunch, then, omnisciently knowing what the thief was thinking, he actually gave the thief the cup. Now, the thief was incredibly shocked by this, as you can imagine. And um, he was so shocked that he couldn't contain himself, and so he had to ask the master, why would you give me such a precious thing? He just couldn't believe that this, is, this had happened. Why would you possibly give me this beautiful, valuable thing? You don't even know me. And Nagarjuna replied to him, for me, this is not at all valuable, valuable in comparison with 
um, what is of much greater value that I possess and that I cherish more than anything. And the thief said, well, what could that be? What could you be cherishing more than something as valuable as this cup? And that was when Nagarjuna told him about the preciousness of knowing one's own mind's nature. And he must have given him some pointing out instructions right on the spot. And so with that, the thief was very taken aback and um, thought that that was also amazing and believed him. And um, he asked Nagarjuna, well, what should I do then uh, with this information? Is there some way I can use this in, in terms of my life? And uh, Nagarjuna told him, well, you just go now, and whenever you have the urge to steal, apply what I've just told you. Watch to see the nature of the mind, the empty nature of the mind. Whenever you have the urge to steal, just do that. And so he said, okay, and he went off. And so for some 15 days, he did like this. Eventually, he came back to the master, and he said, um, oh, this was really uh, something that caused difficulties to my vocation of stealing. Because every time I had the thought to steal, and then I watched the empty nature of mine, I just forgot about stealing. I was unable to do it. And so this is what he had to report. And so Nagarjuna said, well, then forget it. You shouldn't do this. You just go back to stealing. And he said, no, no, no. I can't go back to stealing because for the last 15 days, I have experienced the most blissful joy and happiness that was never even glimpsed by myself in this lifetime. It's been the most peaceful, happy time of my life. And so that was when he formally became a disciple of Nagarjuna and in fact came to be one of the best disciples gave up all of his bad habits and turned his mind completely to uh, understanding the meaning of dharma. And so this is a true account from ancient times, but it does symbolize the point of what I'm trying to make to you, and I hope that it is, is helpful to you, and you can apply that to your own minds. Uh, Кунго Я Шнаунжимбинеркабна Лами манга кургуга, нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам нямсам the mind's nature is not just only empty, but that it is inherently, it is intrinsically luminous or clear. And uh, this was the main subject of Lord Buddha Shakyamuni's third utterance, or turning of the wheel, in fact. And so 
uh, in sutras that document that, such as the King of Samadhi Sutra, it states the empty form or image of the moon cannot be grasped because it is non-existent. Um, so it is reference to um, appearance that appears but is empty in nature, but yet it still appears. So that is what is meant by luminous. Um, inasmuch that the mind's nature is empty and does not exist, it appears um, inherently as a, as a state of luminosity or cognizance, that which can be apprehended uh, to be like uh, the form of the moon reflected in water to be like uh, the image of a rainbow reflected in space. Although it is appearing, its nature is empty. And so just like that, we understand mind's nature to be the non-duality of emptiness and appearance, appearance <coughs> and emptiness. And so when practicing as a contemplative to meditate in this way, then one should consider whatever pointing out instructions have been received from one's masters and practice accordingly. And if you do so, then you have every possibility to become like the greatest masters of India and Tibet, who became masters, who became uh, great adepts um, as monastics, as lay men and women, whatever the case may be by realizing mind's nature to be empty and appearing, but that appearances are all empty and that this is inseparable non-duality, then all suffering of samsara will be put to rest. Shakja <laughs> Lama Yujin or Kambon Jim Panzozanga Gurzakanana Gun Mupam Jamsu Chinur Danawa, the Massam Machian Cargoni Horta, Zedio Chizen Rizena, Kuma Dariga, the Gum Mupam Jamsu, Dari Chinur Guts, the Saragno, the Kongo Shepsa Metanata, Matam Mashapala to the Cargoni Horta Sondre. The Sundrava Janka Chiguni in Nayan, GP Lama Tamchik. Tene <laughs> These uh, subjects that I've brought up here today in brief, but um, really giving you the essence, then it is the upadesha uh, of both sutra and tantra. And we can even say that it is the upadesha of the Dzogchen tradition because within that context, there's also the sutra aspect of that upadesha, which can be presented more publicly, such as how I've done it. And so giving quotes from the Madhyamaka philosophy and the upadesha instructions. Um, actually, when I first planned to give this talk, I didn't think I would openly reveal these things. But due to root causes and contributing circumstances, I changed my mind and decided that I would just last evening, actually. And so this is similar to something that my master, Kempo Jigme Kunzuk, had said um, in his Dohaya teachings, in one of his spiritual hymns, uh, where he said that the great Nipon Rinpoche, whom he, he drew his knowledge and source of blessings from, uh, 
gave me the precious wealth, the ineffable wealth, uh, to know my mind's nature. Um, and I just have to share it. I cannot help but to come out with it and share it with others. And so um, he, he wrote the song about how he gave higher teachings based on just having to come out with it because it was so precious to him. So that's how I feel here today, that um, despite whatever plan I may have had due to interdependency, uh, I just came out with saying some of these things and sharing some of the fifth points of the great tradition of the Madhyamaka and um, the mantra approach. And so it was the coming together of auspicious causes and contributing circumstances that made this occur. Pate Shadgoshikar Jimson, the Pacher Tarisum, sounds yoke. She did Cherizena, a Girgun Kuna Batsuena, then a Lama Mapamdana. Tene tam manga kurkurtana, Jean Le Kurkura, Jimju, Hachang Yerung or the Shini, Tene Chula, Tapa Dana, Jimju Hayo, Tirkin Chigyok. Jirkin Nibata, Tater and Tronchir, and then a Tronchir and then a Yamak Chigan to Kumio Marda, Tan Dodo, Tene Amurki, Tariga, Ta Rawan, Jotam Shonsagar, Yarsa Tumazir Konajaga, Tene Amurki, Yarkup, the Tronsaga to go, Tastelnitso in B. Тогда then the Kong Nambala and the Panchi was the Mato di Taji Tana Namcha Tan and Jonkung and Joson Sanchet of Katsakale Monsona, Tachu, which is Zamunjas, which is Jerak, which is the Joko Jerego, some you were not told number some Zerkonaja. Tish Timjit de la Tene, Terangi, Takungochi, Te Mangriana, Mangaya, Kan Tariana, Tatamba Kumatsu, Songjun the Tsungi, Hachang. Rung, Matsegna Matari, Hajan, Rantan Chivogo, Ta Longen Zirkun and Jaga, Suma, Sugio, Rung Kikno di Dana, Ta Kumagno and the Wonjagatera, Cherna Balatari, Mar Pernayen, the Natari, Stimjus in Girif, Sanga, Stimjurgo, Chiva Juno, Tene, Sanji John Dandere, Sanji John Dandere, Sanji John Dandego, Stimjera Chosson, Zena Jirum Bochego, Stimjur to Pirkabna, Togo. Emma Tumba, Emma Tia, Emma Sun Cho, Emma Gun, Stinjan, Rinjon, Larson, Tumba, Tiela, Tashan, Zedida, Tahajan, Dariga, Stimjik, Chu, Zabmoson, Der Shaba, John Dandere, Ditari, Tonyam Selenad, Motsu Dariga, Rinjigre, Tena Tiernaba, Der Shabi Chula, Tapa Dan, Dimo Mena Chaka Twino, Della Dariga. Jim Jigdana, Sound Lord of Taro, then you got in cheat, I have three reasons why I have decided to um, openly give traditional Dharma teachings here today. The first reason is because of um, the professor, Douglas, and um, his connection with um, Lama Nipon Rinpoche and other masters and his capacity to translate this material, to teach, and to show faith and devotion in the Dharma. And so that inspires me. And the second reason is because um, it seems that we're in the city which was the birthplace of America, and the de Declaration of Independence was written. That inspires me uh, as something that has far-reaching uh, benefit for the, the planet. And then thirdly, um, having been on quite an extensive tour when I came from Canada back into the United States to Los Angeles, um, my plan for my lectures was to make them more oriented towards the worldly life of the recipients and not so spiritually directed or traditional. Um, but when you really take into consideration all the time and the trouble, the plane fare and the hotels and those students who are following me as well and who are friends of mine, 
Um, they're also wishing to receive the traditional Dharma teachings. And all of these different points coming together, it seemed that now here is finally an opportunity to share um, the actual lineage Dharma <coughs> instructions. And so that we call tendril, which is um, the auspicious interdependency of a connection that is unplanned. And so that's what's happened here. And also the sharing of quotes from the masters that I've shared with you, these are something that are of tre tremendous value to myself. I learn these quotes, I memorize them, I carry them with me, I rely upon them. And um, they are the very source wisdom of the Buddhist lineage. And so it is also as, as one of the great Gelu masters, um, J. Rinpoche Tsongkhapa mentioned in one of his quotes where he says, um, how marvelous is the teacher? How marvelous is the teacher's speech? How marvelous is this act of protection and this granting of refuge? It is to the master who departs all knowledge that I bow down in reverence with faith and devotion. And so for myself, I am a follower of this tradition and um, I'm hoping that what I've shared with you today will inspire you in some way. If with faith and devotion, that's wonderful. If not that, then to help you and to help improve your life, that would be my hope. Thank you. <laughs>